Welcome back to another episode of Micro Plays, a series where we highlight plays that whether through skill, luck, or even a combination of the two might go unnoticed in the heat of the moment, but still deserve their own time in the limelight. Going into our first play, we find the Houston Outlaws on their final attack round against the Dallas Fuel on Volskaya. With only a minute, they will have to make every resource available count. And 30 seconds in, they look poised to do so, with their initial push netting them a pick onto Doha. Now with the Fuel down a man, the Outlaws push their way onto the point, forcing the Fuel to retreat to the stairs inside the right building as Hanbin and Jexit are brought to the brink of death. But thanks to a last second self-bubble by Hanbin, Fielder is able to focus all of his healing onto Jexit, bringing him back up to full health and quickly switching back to Hanbin, topping him back up as well. Now with the Outlaws in full control of the point, the Fuel need to quickly regroup as they only have 15 seconds to contest. They decide to attack from both sides of the point, jumping down from the windows and splitting the team to both sides of the building. But Dante spots Fielder who has decided to stay on the bridge to heal from above. With his pulse bomb charged, Dante quickly moves to assassinate the lone Ana, a pick that will likely seal out the fight in the Outlaws' favor. With Fielder seemingly giving his full attention to his team, Dante dashes in throwing his pulse bomb at his prey. But with perfect reaction timing, Fielder leaps out of the window, narrowly avoiding the bomb. Dante jumps after him, unloading what's left in his clip in an attempt to still get the pick. But Fielder keeps his cool, flicking his sights onto the airborne enemy and lands a ridiculous sleep dart onto him. While Dante does manage to escape, the Outlaws are now down a crucial ultimate, and with Fielder still alive, he fires his nano boost onto Hanbin, who then charges up his Graviton Surge and tears through the enemy, sealing the map out for the fuel. While this moment has certainly gained a massive amount of attention already, we couldn't help but include it, as a play like this is so rare, especially in an Overwatch League match. After a solid hold from the Dragons on defense, they only have to push the cart to second point to seal out the second map of the series against the Dynasty. As the Dragons push the cart onto the courtyard, Prophet duplicates D.Va to help his team hold the line, while Gesture searches for a flank. But thanks to Void peeling back, he is unable to find anything and is forced to regroup with his team. While this is happening, Prophet fires his D.Va bomb onto the Dragons' back line, searching for a pick. Fleta and Lijagon dip behind the nearby building while Izayaki finds himself with nowhere to hide but thanks to a last second immortality field, he is able to survive. Here is where things start to get weird. Void moves to the front line and is immediately hooked by Gesture. He turns to run, but is quickly focused fired down and is forced out of his mech. As soon as he pops out, it seems like he forgot what he was doing, as he beelines it straight into the enemy team. A decision so strange that he freely flies past Marvel before he can even register what is happening. Void continues on his suicide mission, sprinting into the nearby building, but all of the dynasty is now turned to focus him. While it looks like he's just trolling, a well-placed halt by fate saves his skin by pulling three of the dynasty members away from Void. Void then charges guns blazing at the enemy backline, and as soon as they get close, he calls down his mech, ground pounding three members of the dynasty for an instant triple kill. From here, the dragons have little trouble finishing the point and claiming the map win. Viewers were left in disbelief that Void managed to pull off something so ridiculous. Not only that, but many were surprised at just how big the effective range of remacking really is. Kills with it, slip goes from pop shot over the top, doesn't manage to line anything up. Hits the meantime, headshot in onto Fleta. It's that crucial elimination. Lip trying to play around the side, looking for the supports. Up to the interior, but they play away from it. What? Are you joking? Boy, I've never how seen that. Keep doing this? Never seen Just that before. To be he kills three. Replay right now, production. Get it done. I need to see this. My eyeballs need to absorb this information so I can oh, possibly he's comprehend he's it. how the hell this happens. Next up is a match between the Dallas Fuel and the San Francisco Shock, and maybe one of the few clips you'll ever see where you might think Winston is aimbotting, followed up in the next round by a chaotic final fight featuring four D.Va bombs. The last time these teams met resulted in a brutal 3-0 in favor of the Fuel, and the Shock are looking to reclaim their dignity. After the Shock take the first two maps, it looks like they are poised to get a 3-0 of their own, but the Fuel aren't being pushovers. We find ourselves on the Fuel's second attack round on the insanely close map 3, with just 30 seconds left to capture the final point. Smurf, however, is ready to stop the fuel dead in their tracks. Popping Primal Rage, he flies at Jexa, and despite how slippery Lucio is, he can't escape the ape. 
Smurf juggles him around the room in an insane display of tracking and he quickly moves on to Fielder, taking out both supports in his flurry of fists. With no healing left, the fuel are easily dismantled and can't cap the final point. Now, on the Shock's final attack round, and with just over a minute left to cap the final point, the Ultimate Clown Fiesta begins. Since the teams are a perfect mirror matchup and all members on both sides will have their ultimates up, it's up to each player to outplay their counterpart. The fight opens with Violet popping his ultimate, which prompts both Reapers to Death Blossom at the exact same time. In response to this, both Lucios also drop their sound barriers, as well as both Echoes duplicating D.Va. At this point, seven ultimates have been popped, there are four D.Vas on the map, and no one has died. Now the point becomes a minefield as three diva bombs are fired off in quick succession. One from the fuel, two from the shock, and not a single one finding a kill. Finally, someone makes a dent as Fearless uses Primal Rage to take out Choi Hyobin, and Sparkle finds a kill onto Striker. Now, things are looking bad for the Shock, and with two members down, Nero sends out the fourth and final Diva Bomb of the fight, but it doesn't find any value. From here, the Fuel are able to force the Shock off of the point, despite them getting to use a second Death Blossom and Sound Barrier, ending the map in maybe the most fitting way possible. A draw. Team to try and take the initiative. Striker into the back line. Oh, comes in with the Death Blossom. They're trying to coordinate it, and forces out the Sound Barrier on either side. Still, the damage being done ripped across the map. Self-Destruct comes through, that's the remake onto Sparkle to take him out of the duplicate and Fearless with the Primal Rage has to try and separate a couple of these teammates on the San Francisco Shock. Might be able to get this kill onto Violet as well as the Fade comes through. For our last two plays, we decided to look at plays that are a bit more on the goofier side. In the match between the NYXL and the Valiant on Dorado, you may have noticed that the NYXL's two tanks, Yakpung and Bianca, both managed to take damage before the round even started. What exactly happened here? Well, thanks to a closer look in the replay viewer, we can see that in the pregame, Molaran was sitting in the attacker spawn innocently firing bombs over the roof. Yakpung takes note of this and takes the chance to try and catch them, and Bianca takes a hit as well. While this might seem pointless, it actually gives Jonah the opportunity to gain some early alt charge. While it would be great for analysis to say that this made a big impact on the game, when Jonek does fire Nano Boost into Yakpung, it completely goes to waste, as the Valiant's Ana lands a nice sleep dart knocking Winston out for the boost duration. Lastly, on Junkertown, we find the Dallas Fuel looking to make a surprise attack on the Spitfire as soon as they leave the spawn. To do so, they will sneak into the building right next to the cart. While crouching will make it so the Spitfire can't hear them entering, D.Va is unable to do so, which leads to quite a ridiculous display as the full team must manually push her into the building. To top it off, as soon as the round starts, Hybrid fires a sonic arrow that completely gives away their hiding spot, and while they do manage to hold the Spitfire inside for a while, they eventually have their ranks broken, and the Spitfire wipe them on the way out. And that's all for this episode of Microplays. What was your favorite play, and what play would you like to see next? Let us know in the comments below. This video was made possible thanks to our wonderful patrons. A massive thank you to everybody on this list and shout out to Jason, Brendan, Foxy, IRYN, Lyra, Mauve, Nate, Nathan, Oshayo, Sierra, Shampoo, Weeaboo, Spartacus, and Yashichi for being Platinum supporters. And an extra special shout out to Steven, Noodles, Marco, and Muki for being Diamond supporters. Thanks a ton guys, it means a lot to us. If you also want to support our channel and unlock perks, check out the Patreon link in the description below, or join our Discord server. If you want to help us out in a different way, leaving a like, subscribing, and hitting the bell to stay up to date is also appreciated. My name is Nikita, and thank you for watching.